Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Estes Park, Colorado, and even more specific than that, we are in front of the Stanley Hotel, the historic Stanley Hotel built in 1909, originally created for sufferers of tuberculosis, such as Doc Holliday. However, Doc Holliday died before it was built, so he actually never got a chance to come out here and uh, he succumbed to a tuberculosis before the Stanley was built. But uh, probably in most pop culture circles, the Stanley, known better as the inspiration for the Overlook Hotel that was built, that was uh, featured in Stephen King's classic horror novel and later Stanley Kubrick's classic horror movie, The Shining. Um, but we're not here to talk about The Shining today. Uh, we're we're going to get to that. Uh, me and Jen actually have a reservation here, not tonight, but in a couple days. We're going to come back, we're going to stay overnight at the Stanley, and we're going to kind of dig in to some of the, uh, the Shining lore here at uh, the Stanley Hotel. Because uh, we did not come here to Estes Park for The Shining. We did not come here to uh, Estes Park for the Stanley Hotel. We actually came here for a yearly celebration known as Frozen Dead Guy Days. Now, Frozen Dead Guy Days is not necessarily a celebration of all frozen dead guys. It is a celebration of one frozen dead guy, a man by the name of Grandpa Bredo. Grandpa Bredo was from Norway. His uh, dream I guess, or his wishes for after he died was to be frozen so that someday he could be unthawed and that medical science would have progressed enough where they could bring him back to life. So he would still have his body, his earthly vessel, in order to, uh, in order to keep living. And uh, his daughter and his grandson were determined to keep his wish. They actually transported his frozen body from Norway to America. And then they built their own cyber... Cry I'm sorry, cryogenic lab in their backyard. They uh, just basically piled up dry ice in a plastic shed, and for there, uh, Grandpa Bredo would be there for years. And uh, this, it kind of became like an, I wouldn't say an urban legend because it's true, but a legend around town, the legend of Grandpa Bredo, that there was a frozen dead guy in a shed in, you know, up in the hills. Um, this originally was in the town of Netherlands, where they, they began the celebration. You know, there's such this large legend of frozen Grandpa Bredo, the frozen dead guy, that they would make a whole festival celebrating him, the frozen dead guy days. And uh, we're actually planning on going to frozen dead guy days tomorrow. So you may ask, why are we at the Stanley? So, at some point, you know, it, it became an issue keeping a frozen dead guy in a shed in your backyard. The, the local health officials were not fond of it. Eventually, um, they, they cracked down on it. A law was passed that outlawed the keeping of dead bodies. However, oddly enough, even though this, this, this caused all this outrage, this caused them the health department outrage, they decided to make a grandfather clause and they allowed Grandpa Bredo to remain frozen. However, no other grandpas could be frozen after that. But at some point, the Stanley Hotel stepped in and they said, we will take care of Grandpa Bredo. And they teamed with a reputable cryogenics company and they had Grandpa properly frozen in a cryogenic chamber. And he stays here at the Stanley Hotel. So the hotel from The Shining just so happens to have the International Cryogenics Museum inside, complete with the frozen dead guy, Grandpa Bredo. So we, like I said, we're gonna try to doing the festivities of frozen dead guy tomorrow here in Estes Park. But tonight, we figured it would be best to start out by meeting the frozen dead guy. And they offer tours where they take you to actually see where Grandpa Bredo is frozen. And that's what we are going to do today. So please, follow me. All right, so let's head into the Stanley. Our tour should begin here in just a little bit. And we're gonna have a chance to look at the Stanley a little more when we come back here in a few days. But uh, just see the 
lobby here. It's an amazing, historic, breathtaking uh, area here. Really, really love the vibe already. And just look at this view out the front window here. It's pretty breathtaking. All right, I think we're gonna head down the elevator here to uh, take our tour. We'll just hope that no uh, blood comes pouring out. I guess it's like an emergency key here that you can break and use on the elevator. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, look at this. Oh my goodness. You excited, Jen? Ah! Excited for our frozen dead. Oh, we got that one. Excited for our frozen dead guy tour? I've never seen a frozen dead guy. Never? Never. I mean, I'm probably grateful for this that. This is probably right? the like, best. This is probably the best case scenario yeah, to see a frozen dead guy. I think so too. <laughs> this whole like this is a creepy elevator. Like, Even without yeah, the it's blood. got like a weird switch right there. Right, did we just start going back up? Oh, we're going back up. Wait. Is... Why are we going up? You guys saw me. I hit. No, really. I hit one. No, and now like you can see like now oh. we're on. I should. I think. I think. I, where are we? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're going out of the basement. You oh, she could have. She could have got on. She just... Yeah. What you? Are you in basement? basement? Yeah, because okay. I was like, oh, we came in through the basement. All right, let's try that again. Maybe you did it. I think you did though. What happens when you turn that thing? I don't know what this crank here does. Does it send you to the basement? Now we're back. No, this is back where we started. Why is this elevator? It's almost like this it's elevator's haunt, haunted or something. All right. This crank says to operate car with doors open. Oh, so this is so you can operate it with the doors open. Wait, who would want to do that? It's an emergency, I guess. All right, are we on the right floor? Here we are. Here, Jen. You need this is for it? the Frozen Dead Guy tour there. Oh, I'm official. We we're getting some snacks here before uh, the tour. We noticed they have the uh, frozen, frozen dead guy cakes here. Limited edition frozen dead guy cakes. You see the frozen dead guy reaching out from his grave within the cupcake. All right, we've started on our uh, frozen dead guy tour. The tour guide asked and not to film him, not to, to record his voice. So I'm gonna try to do my best, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, here it is right here. This is the International Cryonics Museum, also known as the Ice House. Here we are in the International Cryonics Museum. That is Bredo right there in that tube. Alcor is the company that partnered with the Stanley. They're the uh, world leader in cryonics. And uh, sadly, they said that they feel that Bredo is non-viable, but they still uh, kind of use the state-of-the-art system to take care of him. And uh, apparently they, he's almost kind of a test case because he's non-viable, because there's no chances that he'll come back to life and attend Frozen Dead Guy Festival himself, that they kind of experiment with the equipment to kind of see how well it preserves him. Here he is, there's Bredo. You can see the Norwegian flag there next to Bredo. He never was in the United States as a living man, but has been here uh, celebrating his unlife in the United States. Now this here was the original capsule that Breda was brought to the United States in by his uh, grandson. It actually has the information just scratched in the side. All the identifying information is kind of scratched in, or like keyed in to the side of the capsule. Oh, and there is, uh, there is a young Breda, man that had so much more life to live. That is, this is the shed that he originally, originally lived in, or originally was frozen in before he was transferred here. You can actually step inside the tube. Do you want to check out? Going to get frozen in the, in the tube. What's it like being living in a tube? Do you want to be frozen in a tube when you die? That seems kind of cool. Yeah, I'd like to keep you around just in case. No, just in case. Aw, well that's nice. Yeah, it really was. Oh no! 
Is that your dead face? Are you Han and Carbonite? I feel like that's the face he made. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he came back. <laughs> so this tube that we were posing in, this is a six person tube, but these are the actually individual tubes that they'll put a person in. And apparently they actually do wrap it in a sleeping bag to help keep the, uh, keep the person frozen. But you see that metal tube, every one dead guy shoved in there. And here is the process on which a body is frozen. Apparently original, initially to pack it full of ice, get it all ready. And then underneath here, is where the uh, liquid nitrogen gets pumped in to keep the body good and frozen so it can la later be uh, resurrected. Yeah, pretty, pretty amazing here at the uh, International Cryonics Museum. So this is uh, almost ridiculously fitting for the Stanley, but the tour guide had told us that back here, there's actually a pet cemetery. He said likely all the graves are covered up by the snow, but yes, at the Shining Motel, there is a pet cemetery. Yeah, this is where the pet cemetery is. Looks like it's completely, completely under the snow, but um, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe somebody can come back here in the summer and check it out. Just the fact that there is a pet cemetery at the Shining Motel is pretty amazing. All right, relaxing out here on the porch of the Stanley after our uh, frozen dead guy tour. All right, so Jem, what did you think of the International Cryonics Museum here at the Stanley Hotel? Um, I learned that cryonics and chi cryo cryo <laughs> cryo cryogenics, is that it? Cryogenics. Cryogenics. Is uh, there are two different things? So yeah, apparently there's. there's like, I guess they get confused, and I didn't know the difference either. Apparently, I don't even know how to pronounce this. <laughs> <laughs> but cryonics is the practice of freezing humans or living animals in order to bring them back to life at a later date, and cryogenics is simply the study of freezing temperatures of cold. It's almost like the study of cold, if that makes sense. And I'm sure if we're getting this wrong, someone somewhere out there will correct I us studied a lot in of the cold. comment section. You studied a lot of cold? Yeah, living in Buffalo. You should have gotten state. into cryogenics while you're living in Buffalo. Yeah, I posted, I did. I lived every day in, <laughs> in the word I can't pronounce. No, I feel like being out here, like I just posted my it's springtime video and then we came out here and I'm like, it's, it's winter. winter like this is literally I, the first I time I've see, really seen yeah. snow like this winter. I mean, in um, with your family as well, but I was like, oh, there's no snow this winter. Oh, there's lots of snow this winter. No, that's kind of nice. I've never been out in Colorado, like in the, just like the, the cold, the snow like this. It's kind of kind of nice in a way. It It's very pretty. It's also very what cold. Did <laughs> what did you think? You know, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't, we didn't get a chance to see Grandpa, we could see where Grandpa Bredo, his capsule, but. Uh, Bredo's it, an amazing name. But it was in, it was in, uh, like it was in a metal tube. I guess they, they, they can't get it cold enough with anything that's that's like a clear and that you can see through. So the festival's in honor of him. Yes. And they used to just carry him through the street. So apparently, I didn't realize this part. They apparently, during the Frozen Dead Guy Festival, back when he was just living in a shed full of dry ice. That's where I live. And, and get this. Okay, so his family brought him over from the United States, from Norway to the United States, and kept him frozen. They were living in a house that had no running water and no power. They actually moved to this part of the country because it was so cold. <laughs> and they had a plastic shed that they made sure that grandpa stayed frozen. So they really like had a, a, some strong dedication to, to make, so they were living like in freezing weather with no heat, no electricity, so that dead grandpa could stay frozen. Yeah. But apparently, and Grandpa was living his best life while his family froze. Living, living his best is, dead life. His best death, maybe? But, yeah. um, so yeah, apparently for Frozen Dead Guy, the original Frozen Dead Guy days, they would actually take him out of the shed and parade him around town as part of the uh, 
festivities, a frozen corpse. Well, when you first texted me and told me that there was the Frozen Dead Guy Festival, I kind of thought that's what it was. I <laughs> thought he was gonna be like on a block of ice and there was gonna be like maybe like a campfire and like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like the festival's weird in itself. I could not envision what was happening, yeah. but it's just an honor. But they say they say that even though even though they're spending all this money keeping him frozen, that they've decided that he's been frozen since 1989. They said either the guys, the company that froze him in 1989, the technology may not have been as good back then, and or they said that taking him out and walking him around town may have degraded the freezing process. So at this point, is he just like a symbol, like of hopefulness and like um, I don't know. It's interesting, interesting to think about, yeah. So they're doing all this, like all this work to keep him frozen, just kind of out of tradition it, almost. It, it has to because be of expensive. Like, it, yeah, it's very expensive. They're sponsored by the Alcor, the cryonics company. And um, yeah, it's, it's gotta be expensive to keep him, I don't wanna say live, keep him frozen. Um, even though they, they've determined there's no chance of bringing him. Yeah, that's what I thought was crazy. Bringing him back from the dead, but um, yeah, and uh, but but I guess in some ways they, they said that it that it's not not completely just for whimsy or not completely just for funsies that they do actually monitor him. They can actually do experiments and things on him, knowing that there's no way to bring him back because they can't experiment on normally normal cryonically frozen people because there's they want to be brought back. So, because there's no chance to bring him back, they can actually do experiments on him and try things out on him that they wouldn't be able to do. To like better, yeah. So like better future people. That's why I was thinking he's like a symbol of hope and like innovation and. So apparently, so the the, the company it's Al called Alcor that that sponsors the museum that like the tuna that takes care. Of, it's but that's Albacore. Oh. <laughs> Albacore. Um. So apparently, um. So the understanding is it, it's somewhat of a. Oh, they said it, they call it a hopeful science. Because it's not, they've never, I don't think they've ever brought back a person. They've never frozen a person and then later brought them back as a living person. And apparently they, the money, there's something about, they, 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 can, they said that, that life insurance will pay for it. So apparently they, Wait, what? they take your life, I guess you can give your life insurance policy and then oh, they. well your life insurance policy will pay for anything. It's cash. Well, yeah, I guess they take the cash. <laughs> But then they, they put it into, they, they invest your money. They like keep it in a, a, a savings account where they can use it to make money and that money goes towards keeping you uh, frozen, oh, frozen forever. I see, so they don't really like keep your money. Like that's not the payment, they like take Well, it I think some of it is the payment. Well, yeah, no. they pay themselves out of it. Um. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. They did say, now this is something I did not know, and this is something I did find fascinating. While they've never brought any people back from being frozen, they've actually brought animals back from being frozen. They said it was fairly recently, 2016, which I guess now that I say it out loud, that's not that recent. That was eight years ago. But um, they, um, they brought back, they said they froze, what was it, they froze a bunch of, of rats. Uh, Lab mice. Was it lab mice? Okay. So they taught these lab mice how to do mazes. Like the hedge maze. I was here. just gonna say like the hedge maze. Here at the, here at the, 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 uh, the Stanley. <laughs> so they taught the, these mice to do mazes and then they froze them and then they brought them back and they said 80% could still do the maze. So literally they were frozen for two years. Frozen solid for two years. So theoretically I think they could do this to people but... So if I freeze you and two years later, you'll just be able to pick up the camera and be like, hey guys, well, what they said, this? They said 80% of the rats oh. could solve the maze. So apparently the other 20%, their their brains are... Did they, were they alive at least? I don't know all I don't, the details. I don't know how many, but, but it said, the, 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 I think they all came back to life, I think okay. they said. Um, yeah, they must have because then 80%, they would have been like, yeah, yeah. So, so it's possible. That's crazy to think about it. You can be in suspended frozen animation. So I guess they could do that to a person. I guess it's just unethical to freeze a guy just to see what happens. And I freeze you just like on the side of the Rocky Mountains. Just well, that's what they originally tried to do. They I'm just, gonna yeah. throw you over there. Just well, I'll thaw in the springtime. Oh well, yeah. Well, then you'll be back to life. <laughs> <laughs> we also learned that apparently there have been a few. Um, a few incidents with with, cry <laughs> with uh, cryonics that apparently there was a lawsuit because 
you know, they gotta work, they gotta work quick. You know, it's like when you donate organs, they gotta work quick. They gotta get those organs out, get them to people that need them. But, you know, they gotta make sure, they gotta make sure you're dead. Um, but apparently there was an incident where someone may have been possibly, possibly frozen alive that wasn't dead all the way. Cause they gotta, they gotta, they gotta rush. You know, I think that one has to do it like while you're almost like, while you're almost like still, not, I don't wanna say alive, but that your body, obviously you can't like, you can't like dig up a corpse right. and freeze that and then keep it for like later. Fresh it has to be yeah, pretty pretty fresh. So I think they maybe got one a little, caught one a little too fresh, and the person may not have uh, may not have been all the way um, dead. Apparently, you can also pay to have just your head frozen, yeah. which um, can we put it on a shelf in the bunker? Is that what it's for? Just to have a, just for a decoration? Yeah. My question is, what if, once they like science figures out how to bring you back to life? Aren't I gonna need my body? <laughs> we'll prop you up on something else. I don't know. Like, if... I'll put you on like Joe Dirt's body or something. I don't think I'd want to just be a living head. It could be fun. They also said they had a. Um... And Santa Clarita diet. Nathan Fillion, his head was living in the basement. I've never seen oh, that. That's good. <laughs> um, they also said there was another facility, a cryonics facility, that apparently had a, a breakdown, a mechanical breakdown, and that all. There, none of this sounds good. <laughs> they said that the bodies were turned into a sludge they 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 could not be rescued and they decomposed into i mean i already heard this and i sound shocked would you still so you said earlier in the exhibit that like i should be frozen because then there's a chance that yeah so like what if there was a mishap and i turned to sludge would you still cuddle me cuddle with, like, and like sludge cuddle and rancid human sludge no, maybe not rancid maybe i'm still nice i think once you you're i think once, with, like my body I spray think... i use by virtue of being sludge, you're already rancid. <laughs> what if you put me in like a container and cuddled with the container? Maybe, but it wouldn't be cold. I thought it would be warm somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> frozen? No, it would be frozen. Well, what do you think? I, I mean, thinking... I guess this is the question. I cuddle with your sludge. You cuddle with my sludge? I... But but what do you think? Like this, I guess this is the big question coming out of the cryonics museum. Would you? Do you want to? Do Do you want to be frozen? Um. Not really. Not really? I mean, not even just because of all the mishaps that we've heard. I don't know. Maybe when it, you, what you feel like when it's your time, it's... I'd rather just like grow into a tree. Grow into a tree? Yeah, my body like... You don't want to be brought back as a brain dead those... half zombie monster <laughs> dripping sludge. They have those coffins now, or maybe the urns that like, they like the biodegradable and then you're a tree. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about those. Yeah, I like those. What was it that, um, oh, what's his name from 90210? Jungle Boy's dad. <laughs> Luke Perry. Luke Perry. He was buried. I was gonna say Jason Priest. He was buried in a suit made out of mushrooms. Oh yeah. So that the mushrooms would would eat his body. And so yeah, there's you know, it's there's a lot of choices of what I think to do. There's an undersea one too. I forgot what it is. Under the sea? Yeah, you can be buried like I want to be sea buried level, under, then you it like grows or something. Uh, I don't remember. I want to be buried under the oh, sea. Oh, you just want like your whole body down there? That's like oh, yeah, fish. with like singing fish and <laughs> you can be Sebastian of the death. But I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. That would be a dark. Yeah, I guess you know. Yeah, I guess we never really had the conversation what to do with the other one's body if if we if, if one of us dies. What do you want? Um, taxidermy. <laughs> I feel like you really want to be a skeleton. Oh yeah. In a museum. I think I would. And I do kind of too. Honestly, like now that I'm really thinking okay. about no, it. Okay. Not in a museum. I want Oh no. You <gasps> to sneak me into a dark ride oh, no. or a fun house <laughs> and hang me up. Go to like a fun house and you're like, "Man, I got this really realistic skeleton. It's worth a lot of money. It's really realistic, but I don't even know where to put it." And I was just wondering, you guys are great. You're a great dark ride. You run a good show here. Maybe you could just hang the skeleton up and it would scare people. And they'd probably be like, you know what, that's a good idea. You, can we put your, the hat on it? Yeah, but how would you explain that? Skeleton's wearing a hat, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think but that's my, that's my the wishes. Buffalo Museum of Science, the skeleton that you can interact with. Okay, like, I would do that, I would do yeah, that. Yeah, I remembered you wanted to do that. The Buffalo, yeah, there's that, what's his, he's like Mr. Bonesies or something. Yeah, something like and that. he can like turn levers and he's like, <laughs> I like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I want my skeleton. That's what I want my skeleton. Yeah, we want to be Mr. and Ms. Bonesy. <laughs> so, yeah, I want, I want my skeleton displayed where children can play with it. And. That doesn't sound weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still need to see that. It looks really fun. Yeah, yeah. You've never seen that? You've never been. 
I mean, I've been there, you but. You grew up in Buffalo. Yeah, but I don't think I've been there since that's been there, or I just don't remember, because I went there on like a field trip as a kid, or. We weren't paying, probably weren't paying attention. No, I remember the big taxidermy, taxidermy grizzly bear yeah, when you yeah. first walked in. I asked you if that was still there. That's that still terrified there. me yeah. as a kid. The grizzly bear? Yeah. <laughs> what? Why did it terrify you? Thought it was. It was still... so big. I never saw an Thought animal it was still that alive? big. No, it was just giant. Like if you're little. I mean, we saw one at the um, park. Um, however many days ago that was. Now I don't even know. And it was like. Rah! That's on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking though. This. Oh no, he thought of a new idea. No, no. I was just thinking back. Just gonna think back to the whole story of uh, Grandpa Bredo and the uh, Cryonics Museum. This is all very strange. Yeah. I really love this. I really love this. It's super strange. This is so weird. So, you have, let's just recap here. <laughs> we have Grandpa, who lives in Norway, tells his family that he wants to be frozen so that he can be brought back. The family pretty much dedicates their life to uh, to freezing. I don't know why they brought him to the U.S. I don't know. Is it, isn't Norway pretty cold? Yeah, I don't, maybe so they, he always wanted to visit. They brought him over here in a tackle box. <laughs> they, um... They uh, they put him in a shed. They lived, they lived off the land. They lived with no power in their house. So they could they basically dedicated their lives to keeping Grandpa frozen. Now, did Grandpa want it, or did the family just decide? The, the, the gra Grandpa wanted it. He they did said want it. That okay. was his wishes. Um, but then you know it became a festival where they paraded him around town. <laughs> I don't think he knew about this part. I think he was just like, "Hey, free me!" It would be really interesting. Watch. Really interesting. <laughs> yeah, he could have probably. Well, he was like, "You know what?" If they can, you know, freeze me so they could cure me someday. He did, probably didn't realize that he would be like the an exhibit. <laughs> he would have a festival based around him. But he's uh, also a very cute guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I looked at his picture like, oh, look at that. <laughs> but uh, so <laughs> like, yeah. If I had to pick someone to freeze, he's adorable. So the absurdity of it, where you know they keep him in a shed, it becomes he becomes this local legend. They begin parading him around in the streets, in a festival. <laughs> Um, and then it winds up that uh, the hotel from The Shining decides that he can move in there and the International Cryonics Museum develops him his own pod to live in where they spend thousands of dollars to keep him frozen even though there's literally no chance. You know what? I'm not going to say that. I don't, I don't know what... They say that there's no chance that he come to life. You know what, Jen? I believe. I believe. I believe that someday that they're gonna thaw him out, they're gonna figure out what's wrong with him, they're gonna fix it, and then living Grandpa Bredo is gonna come to Frozen Dead Guy Fest, and they're gonna yeah. carry him around in a casket. Wait, he'll be alive. Yeah, but you can still carry him in a casket. Why can't he just walk around and enjoy the festivities? It's because his legs won't work because they've been frozen for 40 years. No, if you want to believe, you must fully believe. He can walk, he can do anything. He's going to be like, I regret this. Yes. Worst decision I've ever made. Please, please put me back in the ice. Oh, no. Put me back in the ice or just end it now. Chop my head off. <laughs> Does anyone have an axe that they can chop my head off with? They, they do. Oh, they it's do have. Fitting. They do have an axe here. Maybe yeah. that's why they chose here. They have an axe. They have, they have, they have, they, I think they have the axe. We're going to do the Shining Tour later in the week. Yeah, but I haven't I, seen it. But I think that they, uh, they have the axe from the Shining. So maybe that's what they can use to chop Grandpa Bredo's head off in this theoretical scenario that we've come up with. <laughs> I don't know why you say this is weird. <laughs> I mean, everything you just described seems like a normal day, a normal festival in the land of us. <laughs> the whole thing's weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, so, it's, so it's super, super, super. So the plan weird. tomorrow is, uh, is to check out Frozen Dead Guy Days. Now we've got a lot of snow. We uh, we almost got snowed in. Um, oh my god. We almost didn't make it here because the ride here was terrible. My windshield wipers didn't work on my infamous rental car. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the rental cars returned. But yes, it's out of our we lives. We went back to Denver today, returned the rental car, and that issue. The chapter is over. Oh, I don't even think I mentioned. I don't even think I mentioned the. Um, this is an update. The the windshield wipers just decided to quit working. And the. So Jed had to drive from uh, from you know middle of nowhere, Colorado in the mountains to Denver. With snow and uh, and salt I was getting kicked up. pouring water on the windshield, oh and gosh. I went to the gas station to get more water, and then I was like, "Let's just try." And then suddenly they were working again. And then the day before they were like, eh, and then they stopped. Yeah, stuck the up. 
so where they were they actually blocking the, the view. And so, they called me and tried to explain to me how to work windshield wipers. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> Jen had been corresponding with the guy from customer care, who's actually he's he, very nice. he's a very nice man, and he made the situation a little more palatable. Yeah. But when Jen called him and, and <laughs> the voice further concerned about the windshield, he made a point of saying, Well, did you try turning the button? He's got, <laughs> she got she got some more mansplaining. Like, so when there's ice, sometimes it like I'm like, I'm from Buffalo. Yeah. That was the first <laughs> like, thing we checked to make sure to yeah. make sure it wasn't frozen. It was there's something wrong that like a motor or mechanical. I don't know a lot about but cars. It it started if I don't think I would have made it through the Rocky Mountains. I mean, like it was like up and down and slush yeah, and ice. Yeah, yeah, it was through the through the through the the mountain passes. I learned that a pass is over. Yeah, I think I think that's, that's what a pass is. Like like when you're going over over a mountain pass. So it's either a pass or a gorge. Or a gorge, yeah. A gorge is when you're going like down in between mountains. Look at me lo learning, <laughs> learning mountain learning terminology. All the, all the mountain <laughs> terms here. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, we got we we got in the cursed rental car. It's gone. <laughs> they did. Theoretically, um, they refunded us everything except the original 250 that I paid Priceline for and it. And I got a text today that my deposit is going we to got be our, We got our deposit so. back, which I was like, oh, they're going to keep our deposit. <laughs> I know they're going to keep our deposit. Uh, but yeah, that, so that issue's resolved. So we, we, we drove up today here to uh, Estes Park. Yeah, I'm very excited to be in your car instead. We uh, we could the, the the prices we wanted this maybe I thought about maybe staying at the Stanley tonight but the prices were a little were a little uh, little high for right now they're having a special event and um, and it's the weekend so we figured we'd we'd wait until uh, we can stay here on a weekday yeah so we're gonna be here in a few days we're gonna come and back there's here there's more tours there's more tours I think we're gonna we're gonna take the Shining tour so we you yeah. kind of get more into the Shining. I think we're gonna try to watch the rewatch. Yeah, I haven't it. seen it in years. I mean, I remember like the highlights, but I don't remember the maze. You don't remember the maze? The maze no. is kind of a big part. No, and I mean, I kind of remember. Yeah, she's actually, they actually do have a, uh, a hedge maze here, right there in front of the porch. It's a preview. <laughs> so that's a little preview, preview of what's to come. No, I really don't remember the maze. But I the, remember the elevator. But the plan for tomorrow is uh, frozen, frozen dead guy. Festival. I don't know a lot of what to expect. I know there's going to be coffin races. There's going to be, um, I don't know, there'll Dead be guys. celebrations. Grandpa Bredo, he doesn't come to the festival anymore because he's cryonically frozen. And uh, I guess they just, I don't know, I don't know. They should bring him. I mean, I, maybe just too, maybe he's, too, he's probably like too cold to even touch now. Oh my goodness. Like, air spray, like for your computer. Yeah. Like how it, yeah. Oh yeah, I bet like he, if I get if you touched him, like your hand would like adhere to him. Probably. So he doesn't come, but we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna plan on being there. Yeah. And I'm uh, gonna hope. You're gonna hope. There's like four feet of snow. And yeah. So yeah, we got. Yeah, like I said, we almost got stuck because there's so much snow out here in Colorado. The pet drive up here to Estes Park was pretty clear. I was I was surprised. It was a really. Like it looked like the drive at the beginning of the shining. Yeah, so it really did. So but it was it was the roads were clear. There was a lot of snow, but the roads are clear. Um we don't know if what the what the conditions are gonna be for the the, the park tomorrow, for the, the, the festival. Yeah, that's why I'm we're trying gonna... to figure out if it's like, cause with my autoimmune stuff, if it's cold, I'm worse. If it's humid, I'm worse. So here it's pretty cold. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> like we're, we're, the reason I moved to begin with. We're gonna play it by ear, yeah. yeah so he's a little, going. I'm, I'm going for sure. I'm going for sure. Yes. Jen's gonna make a decision in the morning if she's gonna join me. See how I feel. You're not just given, you know, that cold weather. I hope so. It cold weather's fun. right. It seems it fun. Seems I hope weird. you can hope you can make it. Yes. But, <laughs> but, but, but I'll plan on being there. Yeah, one I way told or the them other. we have to buy warm socks on the way back. Warm to the socks. Hotel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, sadly, not this hotel. We're staying in a different no. hotel tonight. But, but we. We'll, uh, but we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Unless we get snowed out, then we won't be back. Because there's apparently what I've learned in Colorado is nothing's for certain because you never know the weather, what the weather's gonna do. It certainly seems like it. But uh, but appreciate you guys joining us. We hope to have some fun tomorrow. Uh, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe. Uh, travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to help contribute to the channel. <laughs> Uh, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. Get you a postcard once a month from me to you. I have St. Patrick's Day, man. You got St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is coming up in a few days. Yeah. Um, what was I at? All of that helps keep... All of that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this frozen dead guy frozen.
in his too. <laughs> Until next time, my friends, this one's... In the frozen guy. In the frozen tube. Yeah. <laughs>